beauty is a relative topic that is why we say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder but as much as beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder the ultimate thing the ultimate determinant of how good we feel how well we feel at a personal level is based on how beautiful we are how beautiful we believe we are perceived by the society and the people that we care about and the people that we look forward to and that is why we'll have so much growth in the beauty and cosmetics industry all over the world and the reason for this is we tend to want to get products and services that will make us feel good feel nice and be able to meet the standards of what we expect of ourselves failure to which it has also other ramifications that could be ranging from mental distress and psychosocial problems but also just the physical and psychological problems and stress and challenges that we contend with because of the challenges with our beauty products one of the key things that we know are ground us especially that is a biological process getting to the point that you're getting into puberty and all adolescent age you start having breakouts and all that acne symptoms and all that these breakouts would have an implication on how one feels and how one doesn't feel and those are critical bits but beyond that being that is not the topic of the conversation today i'm going to look at beauty and cosmetic industry but with a focus on how can pharmacies contribute to this sector how can pharmacies make a difference and what can you do as a pharmacist with an interest in the beauty industry with an interest in the cosmetics industry or a pharmacist who has looking who is looking for opportunities within the beauty and cosmetics industry but then you wondering how do i venture into that space and the basis for this particular conversation is last couple, last week i had a call from a colleague and a friend of mine who was asking how she would support somebody who is looking at developing beauty or cosmetic products and on that account then i did a deep dive and a reflective retrospective reflection on where are our key touch points in the beauty and the cosmetics industry and on that account then i decided that there might be some other people who are out there who are aspiring and wishing to venture into this space but they don't know how do we start the process what would be the key areas that i could play in and what can i offer in that landscape and in that domain so that is a critical bit to understand disclaimer i don't work in the beauty and the cosmetics industry but these are perspectives based on what i look at the formulation science across the value chain to the care the patient side where you are a kind of go to person when the patient needs information and what can you do across that value chain across that continuum as a pharmacist by the virtue that you have preferential pharmaceutical knowledge and insights as a scientist but also beyond being a scientist as a healthcare service provider and that is a very important bit for us to look at and ask ourselves how do we shape that future and what does that future look like so the first thing if you're going to get into the beauty and the cosmetics industry as a pharmacist is to understand that beauty products and cosmetological cosmetological products are definitely for therapeutic value but also for wellness care the self care component of it and in that perspective that you need to know what are the key solution that you're providing for people if somebody is looking at let's say for example just moisturizing their skin then you need a moisturizer what are the key ingredient in a moisturizer that would be needed and what are the challenges that people have with the current moisturizers because ultimately if you're venturing into industry believe that there is competition the alternative players who already offer services and the question that you need to be telling them and the question that you need to answer is why you in comparison to the alternatives that are already in the market and i believe that is a key starting point for you to understand what line of products are you looking at are you going to deal with let's say for example hair care products shampoo are you going to going to deal with cleansers and the facial care products are you going to deal with whatever it is nail polish and all that if that is the product that you going you know the product line that you're going to adventure into you need to know what are the challenges that customers and consumers are having in the current market what are the ingredients that could deliver that value is it a moisturizer is it a hair softener is it a scalp cleaner cleanser whatever it is understand the dynamics of what it is then get into the formulation science perspective of you as a pharmacist can you investigate using the all the viable and the available pharmacopoeias in the world to establish the formulas that can help you get the right ingredient in the right formulation as is needed as you now get to the compounding component of your care that would be a very important and a very critical phase for you if you're looking at cosmetics and beauty industry in the formulation side but as much as you've identified the needs of people in the beauty care products and the challenges that they are contending with you need to look at business development where you ask yourself how are you going to position the product in the market you're going to position it as a competitor to already existing brands 
but as much as it's a competitor existing brands there are some unique features that you are going to be put, put into it those unique features will look at the fragrance that is associated with that particular beauty product the cost factor that is available for this and also the current gaps that are existing with alternatives that are in the market and that is where you take a charge so you could serve as a business development counterpart or an expert in supporting the formulation scientists that you're going to work with in coming up with these solutions or you be the formulation scientist coming up with the formula the ingredients and the constituents that are needed to come up with an ultimate solution that will address these beautiful cosmetological concerns and issues that people are feeling feeling and contending with so maybe just to maintain them to have clear skin and all that good enough somebody who has asked me how do we resolve the breakouts and how do we ensure that the black spots are resolved that is another solution that you could look at what do you need to ensure that that is there is it a regenerative component of the component of the ingredient that you're using or is it the ability to actually cleanse and all that bits of it that you need to understand if it's hair care product is it going to keep the hair moist is it going to kill to clear the dandruff to ensure that you have clean scalp or is it going to end up with people having scalp that have the powdery bits and all that the dandruff so those are the key bits that you need to look at but then when we move from the formulation component of coming up with a product the pharmacist by the virtue that you have the preferential technical knowledge as a pharmacist you can help in actually driving access to these products in the market and that is where you'd come in as a regulatory affairs specialist and service provider regulatory affairs professional to ensure that you're able to register these medicines but if you're working with the regulatory authority you can serve as the regulator assessing the dosier component to establish whether if i'm telling you that i have beauty product a it's a skin care product what are the ingredients in it do they have medicinal components or don't they have those medicinal components if they do have medicinal components what is the rec- recommended usage in terms of dosing and all that that is there to ensure that patients can derive optimum value but at the same time they're not posing substantial risk in terms of global health challenges and all that to the patient so you need to be able to see that as a regulator from either sub preparing the dosages and submitting them or evaluating at the regulatory authority as it is then beyond that ultimately in terms of skin care products most patients and most people generally in the communities that we serve do not go for them in the pharmacies as much or do not go to for them in the hospitals and getting prescriptions unless they have a very severe condition and in that case then the patient information component is a critical bit can you create awareness in the market about the beauty products that are coming in how they can be used if they're prescription only can you talk to the doctors and the physicians wherever they are can you optimize the distribution value chain to ensure that if a patient comes to you and they're talking about a particular skincare product they know when and where to get the product and how to get it there whether there's a digital platform that they can buy from or they have to go to a particular shop what is the location of that shop how is access there and all that you need to be able to optimize that distribution pathway as well for them then when they come to you in terms of seeking information how do you address them are you just going to sell the scientific technical knowledge or not and therefore you need also to look at all those possibilities but then the key thing is to understand what challenge does the patient have can you communicate to their challenge and therefore to give them a solution that will help them find value in the product that they're using and how that product is helping alleviate their symptoms and get them getting better in their life and in their general well-being as a critical component the other bit that is going to be critical for you as a regulator as a pharmacist who is working in the cosmetics and beauty industry is to be able to ensure that actually you have these products and offering cancel when and where people need them the current gap the current challenge we have and this is contributed to laxes in our regulation on one point but also an influx of substandard counterfeit and even adulterated products that are being sold as beauty pro care products that is where you'll find people skin lightening agents are being added mercurial compounds and all that some of these are very poisonous but they are in our market so regulatory component there's need to be strengthened and all that but beyond the regulatory component is if i have medical conditions and i need products where do i get them which pharmacists are specialized in the beauty and cosmetic sector that i can know when i go to these pharmacists i'll have the right products and the right ingredients that will be able to help me and are they going to give me the additional counsel so cosmetology pharmacy is a critical component that we need to invest in and for me when i think of it and i reflect on some conversation that i had last weekend with dr york in one of our conversation the key bit for me is how can community pharmacies position themselves as unique service providers in particular lines of practice imagine as a community pharmacy you just do, do actually scoped a particular domain of work for you which will be in the cosmetology sector 
and you target particular consumer groups that had need of those products and be able to communicate, talk to them, sensitize them, social mobilizing. And beyond the social mobilizing is offering a solution to people who are already awakened to the realization that they need these beauty products, but they also know where and when they can get them. And they believe in you as a professional who is just uniquely positioned to serve that need. I think that is a niche area that is coming up. So we need to look at it as, can we start from the formulation component to come up with formulas? Once we've come up with the formulas, what particular disease areas are we meeting? Can we drive uptake in the market to establish needs and also to establish our business positioning in the market so that we have a unique value proposition? Then once we have that unique value proposition in bringing our product to the market, we need to sensitize the public so that we move consumers and patients and the population from adulterated counterfeit products and poor quality products to the unique quality products that we are dispensing and providing for them through alternative channels. Then once they know the difference between the two, they need to know where you're distributing them and that is where your value as a supply chain specialist and service delivery component comes in. Then have the clinical care component, cosmetology. Do you understand the skin conditions and skin concerns? Do you understand the socioeconomic and the psychosocial imperative that actually will influence use or lack thereof for a particular cosmetic product? Are you able to counsel the patient so that they're able to one, get care from you and get the right care, but also reduce the negative ramification on the mental distress and associated with skin correlated condition that might impact their well-being at a personal level. And that is a unique bit. And most importantly, you need to look at all these in the face of how do I use digital technologies and digital solutions to be able to meet the needs of the patient when and where they are without compromising on quality, integrity of the service that I'm offering, but also meeting them at their point of need. And that would be a key proposition for me. So if you feel like you need support and need guidance, I'd be more than glad to share more insights and I'll be glad to have a conversation with you. And as a disclaimer, I'm not a beauty or cosmetologist by myself, but I know friends who are working in that space, but I'm also looking at it as the pharmaceutical value chain. How do we optimize it? And this knowledge is based on that particular understanding. And I'm hoping it is of value to you and it opens up your mind to what possibilities are out there. Rather than sitting back, you have to venture out and see when you're venturing out who can hold your hand. I'd be glad to support where I can, and I hope it makes a difference. If you enjoy the conversation, please subscribe to the channel, share with your colleagues and your networks. Let's move the profession forward. Let's drive and optimize healthcare service delivery in our region, in our continent, and across the world by the virtue that we are subject matter experts and be able to deliver value to those who need it. And I'm counting on you to make this get to the next person who might find value in it. Thank you and have a good one.